Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about something that doesn't get nearly enough attention in the Redstone community. User interfaces, or UI for short. A user interface is just an interface for a user. For example, in my most recent calculator, this is the user interface. The user can type numbers on the keypad and press other buttons as well. The UI lets them use the calculator. This is sometimes the last part of the project that gets built, so it's easy to just slap something together and call it good enough. But let's do better. Let's be proud of what we build and figure out how to make a great UI. Sorry for the interruption, I forgot to mention that I have a second channel now. I'll be posting shorts and other random stuff there. If we can get it to a thousand subscribers by the end of the month, that would be absolutely amazing. All right, back to the video. The best UI, in summary, is what provides the best experience possible for everyone. That includes new users, regular users, users and developers. How do you create a UI that's great for anyone who uses it? Well, first of all, you want it to be clear. It's never a good experience when you feel confused, right? Especially if someone downloads your world and you're not right there to help them, they'll probably just give up if it's not clear how to use it. Additionally, you want your UI to be communicative. People have extremely short attention spans, and you'll learn this if you ever try to make YouTube videos. If your UI doesn't communicate to them and give feedback quickly, they're gonna lose interest. Let's look at some examples. Example one, mode A and mode B. Either mode A or mode B must be selected at all times, but not both. In other words, a boolean. Here's the first solution. It's really simple. Just two buttons and two signs. I can tell that this one is labeled A, and this one is labeled B. This gets the job done, but there's a few problems. I can't tell what mode is currently selected. It might not be necessary to know that, but it's kind of annoying. And also, it's not obvious from looking at this that only one is supposed to be selected at a time. I mean, the signs say A and B, but there's nothing stopping the user from thinking that both modes could be activated at the same time. If we add some indicator lamps, now we can tell which mode is currently selected. Behind the scenes, we have an RS NOR latch, which just toggles between two different states. If the user tries to activate both at the same time, they'll instantly learn that no matter what they do, only one can be on. But we can do even better. There's a way for the user to know that only one mode can be selected by just looking at it. A lever. With just a lever instead of two buttons, I know that it has to be in exactly one of two states. So this is our final design. In the back, we just have a repeater that takes the lever signal out, and we have a torch and another repeater to help with the indicator lamps. Example two, eight modes. Exactly one mode must be selected at all times. Here's my first solution. It's pretty cursed. I kind of made it as a joke. The way it works is first you select which pair of letters you're going to be using. So if I know I want D, then I'll turn on this for use CD. And then this lever under it selects whether you want C or D. So I would have to flick this down and now we're selecting D. Or if I want G, I flick this lever for use GH and this lever is already pointing to G. So we're good. I know, I know it's terrible, but this is also to prove a point that there's many different ways to approach these things. All right, let's change this up. Instead, I'll use buttons. This is obviously much more natural to use. To make this better, we could throw some indicator lamps on there and some signs, but I have a better idea. If we only care about eight modes, that's how many rotations there are on an item frame. So we can use an item frame selector. All you do to use this is point the arrow at the mode you want. Currently, we're selecting C. If I want to change it to G. There you go. And a different signal strength will be outputted in the back according to what mode is selected. This is very clear and communicative. You can read all the modes clearly and any new user can tell that the arrow is pointing to exactly one mode. I'd say this is our final design. So those are the special cases of two modes and eight modes, but in general for n modes, I tend to use something like this. This is an expandable selector made from RS NOR latches. When I press a button, it selects it and it turns off everything else. It's expandable as long as all of the inputs power the entire redstone line here, because that's what turns them all off during the selection. It's also rising edge triggered, which means that it goes off right when the button is pressed down and not when it pops back up. Another popular UI component is keyboards. There's many different ways to approach keyboards in Minecraft, so I'm just going to show you some of my favorites. Each key has a button on it and a sign on it to tell you which character it is. Every character is assigned a unique 6-bit key. For example, when I press J, this is J's 6-bit key. Or if I press M, this is M 6-bit key. There's also some special lines here like backspace, space, and enter, and they're just directly connected to their buttons. You could give these codes as well, but sometimes it's just easier to keep them separate. So to hook up this keyboard to a display, you need to send the 6-bit character code and the four special characters. If this was a keyboard in real life, this would be inside the wire going from your keyboard to your monitor the 6-bit character code, and your special lines. The other keyboard, and I gotta say I like this one a lot better, is this tiny one which uses banners to show you the letters. This time, instead of a 6-bit code, each character is represented by a unique signal strength value which comes out on one of these lines. For example, if I press D, D is represented by a 13 on the blue. Or if I press I, I is represented by an 8 on the green. And this is the mapping for the keyboard. This shows you what signal strength comes out and what color. For every key, this shows you what color it's going to be, designated by the wool, and what signal strength it's going to be by the sign. For example, this tells me that the leftmost key on the second row is a 15 blue. And sure enough, 
15 blue. And I've also got two special wires here for backspace and enter that just directly map to their button. So when you hook up this keyboard to a display, all you gotta send is the character code and the two special lines. The last thing I wanna show you guys is a simple keypad design. I've been using this guy for ages and I see people asking for it sometimes, so here you go. 10 buttons, one for each digit. It's synchronized at a speed of one tick because each button just has one torch and some wiring. And that's all I got for you guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out, guys. If they show love, I'ma show it back. If the catch is too small, I'ma throw it back. I've done a lot, but I ain't got a lot to show for that. All right, yeah, let's do that again.